Hello, and welcome back. I'm going to try to keep things in balance today and create a glass scale here on the Matt Yasa channel. I'm starting out on a nine millimeter borosilicate rod. This will be the balancing arm for the scale. So I want to create a deep notch in the middle. But you know what? I just did an episode on opals. And so I think I'll stick an opal in the middle. These are all the black and white opals I encased the other day. And so it's all ready to go. I just need to attach it to the end of this rod and melt it in. And so I was getting some good feedback from some of the other glass workers when it comes to working these opals. I had some issues with the black opals getting a little cloudy, a little bubbly. And so multiple sources were saying that they are heat sensitive. The white opals are the least sensitive. And so you can work them a little bit slower, a little bit farther out in the flame, or gather the tube up a little bit more, have some extra glass to insulate that heat. And so I'm molding it on this graphite rod to give it that deep notch. And so with the rod in the middle of that notch, it can tilt both ways about 45 degrees without falling off. If it were straight, the arm would slide right off the stand as it begins to tilt. But now I'm going to bend some hooks on both sides, which will hold the cups for the scale. And the reason I want to hook the cup onto the arm instead of permanently attaching it is because I'm trying to break it down into as many little pieces as possible. It's going to be four separate pieces that fit together rather than just all one piece. And a large reason for that is because of the melting process. If one of the four pieces break, I can just take it off and fix it real quick. But with having every piece melted together, if something goes wrong in the end, it's going to be much more difficult to fix the entire project. And I'm still not at the end yet. Everything is still in the kiln, cooling down. And so I really don't know how well it's going to work or if it's going to work at all. You can imagine being a scientific instrument, it would probably be pretty difficult to do by hand. And especially with a flame, as heat isn't really a very precise tool. It's difficult to track where it's at. But I'll try to do my best here. And now I'm going in to craft the stand for the scale. It's going to be very simple, just three legs. I cut each of the legs to the same length, and now I'm going to melt them all together and form up a little pyramid. It's always good to go back in on your connections to make sure they're fully melted in, especially this one since it's going to be a support item. And now this seven millimeter rod is what the arm is going to balance on. I'll heat up both areas very hot and attach them in the flame. I'll check it from different directions to make sure that it's aligned right and it's not slumping from gravity. I'm going to go ahead and remove a bit of the end and bend the tips over just a little to make it a bit fancier. And then I'm going to go in and reheat the connection since this will be a part of the support structure. I also need to align it right so it sits level. That's looking pretty good right there. And now I'll flare this 12 millimeter blow tube to connect up to this 26 millimeter tubing. I'll use this to create the cups for the items which you're trying to compare on the scale. And now this scale is going to be the more simple variety, the more classic scale. It will just compare the weight between two separate objects. Compared to the more modern scale, which can give you a readout of your weight using a spring mechanism. 
It compares your weight to the tension in the spring. And so I have a lot of heat in the core of the glass. I'm gonna pull it out of the flame and rotate it for a few moments before I puff into it. Those few moments allow the heat to radiate and balance throughout the tube, which will give you a more round sphere when you puff it out. And I'll connect a punty up to the bottom and begin to separate the blow tube. I'm gonna heat up a thin band and then puff while I pull. This will thin the glass up enough to where I can pop a hole very quickly and start opening it up into a cup. I'll remove a little bit of glass just to even up the lip here. It's good to get that as even as you can before you start to open it up or the lip for your cup might get wonky. I'll go in with my jacks tool and start flaring out the lip. You can also spin them open with centrifugal force, but I'm having a hard time spinning it with this smaller punty. And now centrifugal force isn't really a force, but a side effect of momentum. The way I like to explain it is as you spin a large object, you're not actually spinning the molecules themselves that bind the object together. Instead, you cause them to accelerate forward, gaining forward momentum. And then that molecular force, which binds all the molecules together, is what curves that path, causing that entire object to spin. If you spin the object fast enough, it will explode in all directions. And now I had a little bit of a scientific discussion with my brother. I don't like to call them arguments or debates, but rather discussions. The goal in a discussion is that both of us can walk away with some gained knowledge. But to give you some knowledge of what I'm doing here is I'm going to start to bend some loops for the cups. And if you'd like to see more of this type of technique, I would really recommend the skeleton key episode. I made some glass skeleton keys and a glass key ring. They look pretty cool as a necklace. And I think eventually I'm gonna have to make a glass lock to fit one of them. And now I need to make sure that this hoop will fit on the scale. So I'll use my brass reamer to open it up a little bit. And I'll heat up that connection really well again, since it's gonna support a bit of weight and use my paddle to make sure it's flat and even. And now that we're getting close towards the end of the video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. You can also hit that bell icon right next to the subscribe button and click all. This will keep you notified of all my videos I upload and not just some of them. Also, sharing these videos to your friends and on Facebook is a good way to show your interest in the scientific arts. And I'm gonna line my hoops up to make sure we're still in business and cut some excess glass off the back of them. I'll turn down my propane to a tinier flame and go in for a quick attachment here. And most of the heat here is getting pushed past my fingers, so it's not as hot as it looks. And I'll go in on the inside of that connection real quick before I put it in the kiln. And so here it is out of the kiln. I'm gonna start assembling it. I'm putting the cups onto the balancing arm right now. And now it's time to run the test. These weights are from episode 68, the glass stone. This first one is 75 grams, and the second one is right at 100. And hey, it works. Look at that. I was actually really impressed here. I didn't think it was going to work this well. It was kind of a simple design, the way I have everything going, but making sure everything stayed in balance was the challenging part. And so I'm not sure how much this rock weighs, but it weighs more than 75 grams. 
And now if I had a 50 gram weight, I could test it against that, but instead I'll try three rocks. That looks pretty close. It still looks a little heavier than the 75, so I'll try the 100 gram. And so it's not 100 grams. So that means I must have somewhere between 80 and 90 grams of rocks there. Lastly, we'll check the opal, and it is on fire. Look at that. And that's going to be it for today, my friends. Thanks for checking out that video. Remember to like, subscribe, and share on Facebook. That definitely helps build the channel. I'm Matt Yasa. Stay safe, and I'll see you Monday.